All right, now let's talk about how we can take these meta learning ideas and apply them to RL. So the generic learning picture that we had before is that regular learning is when you take the argmin of some loss function on a training set, and that corresponds to some kind of learning function f learn, uh, which is typically something like gradient descent. Generic meta learning can be viewed as minimizing the loss function on a test set where the parameters that go into the loss function are given by a learned function f theta applied to detrain. So we can, by analogy, apply the same idea to reinforcement learning. We can say that regular reinforcement learning is when you uh, maximize the expected reward under some policy, pi theta, and that can be viewed as a learning function frl, but frl is not applied to a training set anymore, it's applied to an MDPM. Okay? So frl is a function of an MDP. Meta reinforcement learning then can be viewed as maximizing the expected reward of a policy um, with some parameters phi i, where the parameters phi i are given by applying a learned function of theta to an MDP mi. Okay, so we've just kind of transported the same definition uh, into the RL setting. So meta reinforcement learning. What this implies, meta reinforcement learning will be tr will be a reinforcement learning procedure, but what, what it will train is this f theta, which itself reads in an MDP and outputs some kind of uh, representation of a policy. So let's try to instantiate this idea. So we have a set of MDPs, and these are called meta training MDPs. And in order for this to work, we need to assume that these meta training MDPs are drawn from some distribution p of m, and then at test time we're going to have a new test MDP, mTest, that is drawn from that same distribution. And we're going to get the parameters for our policy by applying this learned function f theta to mTest. It's important to assume that they come from the same distribution because just like in supervised learning, learning only works when the training and test are from the same distribution. In meta learning, it also only works when the training and test are from the same distribution. So, for example, the different MDPs might correspond to a robot doing different tasks and then mTest would be the robot learning a new task, or it might be something much simpler. Maybe it involves the half cheetah ro robot from your homework running at different speeds forward and backward, and then mTest would be a new speed. Meta learning and contextual policies are very closely related. So you could imagine that one way to view um, meta learning is as the problem of training a policy, pi theta, that is conditioned on all of your experience in the test MDP. So essentially what f theta does is it takes the experience in the test MDP, or in the meta training MDP, whatever MDP it's being run on, and summarizes into some summary statistic that is then used to determine what your policy will do. And that's basically the same as having a policy that is conditioned on all the history that you've experienced in this MDP. So the relationship between this and contextual policies is that this is basically just a contextual policy, except now the context is all of the experience in the MDP MI. Okay, this is not maybe the most obvious idea, so it would be a good it'd be a good idea to sort of pause and think about this a little bit. So let me repeat. The procedure on the left, where the parameters for the new task phi i are obtained by running some learning procedure f theta on mi is basically the same as deploying a policy that is conditioned on all of the experience in the test MDP. Because that's what f theta is really executed on. f theta is a function of an MDP, but it's really a function of the experience you gathered in that MDP. So as long as you can feed all that experience into your policy, then you're doing meta learning. So that is to say that the context, which we call z or omega or something like that, um, is the uh, phi i that we have here. So phi i is basically the context in a contextual uh, policy. The main difference, of course, is that when we talked about multitask learning before, the context was provided for us. Someone would just say like, oh, your job is to do the laundry, your job is to do the dishes. Now the context is inferred from experience in MI. So in multitask RL was given, in meta learning it's inferred. Okay, 
So let's try to make this a little more concrete. Let's try to actually instantiate this idea. And instantiating this idea basically amounts to implementing f theta mi, implementing an encoder that will read in everything you've experienced in the MDP mi and inform your policy how to act. So what should f theta mi do? Well, of course, it needs to improve the policy with experience from mi. So it needs to read in that experience and help the policy do better. And uh, it also needs to choose how to interact. And this is different from supervised learning. So in supervised meta learning, we don't have to deal with this. But in meta re reinforcement learning, we have to also be smart about choosing how to explore in the, in the MDP MI, how to actually choose the actions. But let's leave that one for later. And let's talk about the first part, which is going to work out in a very similar way as in the supervised meta learning. Ex improve with experience. So our experience consists of transitions, consists of state, action, next state, and reward. So we could apply directly the analogy from supervised meta learning and simply set up some kind of model that can read in all of our experience in the MDP MI. The simplest version of this would simply be a recurrent neural network that reads in a sequence of transitions. S1, A1, S2, R1, S2, A2, S3, R2, S3, A3, S4, R3, etc., etc. Every transition that we've experienced in this MDP. This is a little different in a subtle way from policies that depend on history because these transitions would go across episodes. So if you've experienced you know, five different episodes, you would encode all the episodes together. Um, and then the RNN would represent this with some kind of hidden vector. That hidden vector will be fed into a policy head that takes in a state and the hidden vector and produces an action. So this is a very straightforward way to represent F theta that can read in all of the experience and use it to inform what the policy should do. And then, of course, the parameters theta are the parameters of this RNN encoder and the policy head at the end. So as before, phi i is just represented by the parameters of that little policy head and the hidden state of the RNN. And the hidden state of the RNN is the only thing that you're actually inferring at a meta test time when you adapt to a new MDP. All right, so that might seem a little simplistic, right? Because we, we made a really big deal out of meta learning. We introduced a lot of formalism. But then it seems like all we end up with is we just have to train an RNN policy. Is that really all we have to do? Well, the answer is basically yes. Um, and to convince ourselves that this is true, let's walk through a little example of meta learning with this kind of history dependent policy. Let's say that we have a mouse and its goal is to get the cheese. And on different episodes, the cheese will be in a different place, or maybe the wall will be in a different place. So it has to adapt to different MDPs with different placements of cheese and walls. So let's imagine that on the first time step, the mouse goes right. So the first transition that we give to the RNN has the action going right and a reward of zero. Then the mouse goes left, and we encode that, then, uh, and then the episode ends. Let's say the episodes are only two time steps in length. Okay, so now a new episode begins, the blue episode. But we don't stop the RNN. The RNN is still, is still reading in all this experience. Now the mouse goes up and it goes right and it got the cheese. Okay, so that's what's been encoded so far. Now internally, the RNN should be able to figure out that the cheese is in the uh, top right. So then when a new episode begins, remember, we don't reset the hidden state of the RNN. So the RNN still has this context. It's going to encode the experience of going up, the experience of going right and getting plus one. So here you could see that because the hidden state is not reset between episodes, the RNN uh, can actually figure out where the cheese is. And it can also figure out how to explore because it'll explore in such a way as to get the largest reward, uh, given the uh, experience that it's seen so far in that MDP. So let's talk about exploration a little bit more. Why does this method learn to explore effectively? Well. This is the sequence of actions that we that we see during adaptation. And each color represents an episode. So between episodes, you reset to the initial state. The full sequence is a kind of a meta episode. So a meta episode consists of a concatenation of different episodes. So because the RNN didn't see a reward on that first episode going right, then it should know if it was meta trained successfully that on the se second episode, it shouldn't go right again. It should go somewhere else. 
And if it is meta-trained on a variety of MDPs, then these patterns will become apparent to it. So regular reinforcement learning will actually be able to recover these kinds of exploration strategies. It's a little bit of a trick. Basically, the trick is that once you give the policy this entire meta-episode, then the problem of exploration really becomes the problem of solving this kind of higher level MDP. So then regular RL, which just maximizes reward with this policy representation that reads an entire meta episodes will actually solve the problem. So optimizing the total reward over the entire meta episode with an RNN policy actually ends up automatically learning to explore. And that's a very important idea in meta RL. Now, people have instantiated this idea in various ways, including with actor critic methods, policy gradient methods, and many others. More recently, transformers have been used to, as representations for this, but the high-level principle is the same. Somehow inform your policy about the entire history of your experience with that MDP, and it will figure out how to both explore and adapt to new MDPs from the same distribution. There are, of course, a variety of architectural choices. So a standard RNN architecture would just basically concatenate all the different episodes uh, into one long history, into meta-episodes. Uh, there have also been methods that have been proposed that use attention and temporal convolution, uh, as well as uh, parallel encoders. I'll, I'll talk about those a little bit later, as well as transformers. So if you want to learn more about architectures for this, then maybe check out these papers. Uh, and uh, I'll stop there.